Joining us on this week's episode of Coaching in COVID is the new Marjorie and Herbert Chase Class of 30, Director of Dartmouth Track and Field and Cross Country, Portia Dobson. That is a long title for someone brand new to Dartmouth. Welcome. Yes, thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, let's just get it out of the way now. You are... That is an interesting virtual background you've chosen this morning. Uh, I'm assuming the process of moving is taking you uh, many different places uh, in New Hampshire lately. Yes, most definitely. Uh, my current location is in Newport. <laughs> um, I actually am now officially a resident of New Hampshire, so I'm living in Lebanon about six minutes away from campus. Um, but as a former Philadelphia resident, I actually, as you can imagine, um, didn't really need a car in Philly, and I've been there for nine years. So now I'm up in New Hampshire and uh, in the process of purchasing a vehicle, and the New Hampshire laws are that you must obtain a New Hampshire license prior to purchasing a vehicle. So I'm at the DMV in Newport swapping out my, my Pennsylvania license for a New Hampshire license. So hence the background. <laughs> you learn something new every week on coaching and COVID, I guess. Uh, and, and good tires are the key for your car. So just yes, to, I've been told. <laughs> uh, so clearly it's been a whirlwind since you were announced as the, uh, the new uh, director of track and field here at Dartmouth in late September. What's the last five or six weeks been like for you? I actually have been taking over this role, this position uh, virtually from home. So uh, my my first couple of weeks were um, via Zoom calls and lots of emails and phone calls um, from Philadelphia. Um, and if you can imagine, this process was, was very speedy. Um, I was offered on the Friday, accepted on the Saturday. Uh, Pat, you assisted in announcing on a Tuesday. Last day at Penn was on Wednesday. First day at Dartmouth was Thursday. <laughs> so... Uh, um, but definitely an enjoyable process. So uh, I began on October 1st and really just hit the ground running. Um, honestly, that morning, October 1st, I scheduled a staff meeting. <laughs> so we we started meeting and started uh, talking and um, providing my, my plans, my goals, my visions with the staff and really being able to get to know them. And our first team meeting was that next day on Friday. So I was able to address the entire team and really just been moving forward since. Um, and once I arrived in New Hampshire, of course, after quarantine, now I'm able to uh, be on campus, uh, see, see the facilities, my office, and finally be able to see some student athletes in person, which has been quite nice. So it's been a good experience. Coming from Penn, uh, everyone kind of points to the fact that you are staying Ivy League to Ivy League. Um, you had to have known some of these coaches, obviously. I, I know I had uh, conversations with Courtney, and, and he had nothing but good things to say about you and how excited he was that you were the person that was hired. What did you know about the staff uh, that you have coming in um, before getting here on a personal level, I guess? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I actually haven't been asked that before. Um, I, of course, I knew the staff um, from within the league um, and being able to see them in action and competition um, and not just Ivy competition, not just the, the HEPS championships, but um, fortunately able to see them at some of the, the NCAA first rounds and of course the national championships. So um, it's, it's interesting because there is that connection. Uh, Courtney actually is a graduate of Penn um, and he ran at Penn. So seeing his name in the record books definitely adds some uh, familiarity to uh, being able to see him in person. Um, and then just being able to compete against Tim, actually. Uh, I covered sprints, hurdles, and horizontal jumps while at Penn. And um, I shared the multi-events while I was there. So definitely in, in Tim's realm. Of course, for all the other coaches, as far as relays and so on and so forth. So not really knowing anyone on that quite that personal level that we, you know, I could call up and say, hey, what's going on, but be able to know definitely as uh, competitive colleagues um, uh, uh, during my time in the league. So. You have <clears throat> what some people might call the unenviable task of following um, personalities, uh, beloved personalities like Barry and um, the late Sandy Ford yeah. Santones. 
That being said, I know Barry is very excited for you to take the program to the next level. Have you had any interaction with him uh, since you've gotten hired and really kind of felt that passion, that love that, that very few people can match that Barry Harwick had for this institution? Yeah, so it is definitely big shoes to fill. Um, there's a lot of love, a lot of passion, a lot of character there with Barry. Um, I've been able to have a bit of an insight of that uh, during Ivy League calls, um, coaches meetings, and so on and so forth. And we always said um, at my last institution, we we always re really respected Barry's comments and opinions as being very thoughtful and um, ones that we always kind of really took seriously in consideration and moving forward forward. So um, when it was time to take over his position, um, I was pleased. Barry and I did speak the second day. So October 2nd, actually, um, we had a nice phone call, um, just really open. Just I was able to pick his brain a bit. And he was uh, just very willing to offer me um, advice and suggestions and uh, kind of give me the ropes a little bit, show me the ropes, I guess, over the phone. <laughs> um, and then uh, Barry is very gracious to you to just leave me a couple of notes and some important information that he thinks that he thought that I might find useful. So, um, and I'm actually, we'll be able to see him this week on Wednesday. We're going to take a trip through the cross country course. So, um, definitely be able to use him as a, um, a resource guidance, um, some of a mentor, and then as well, um, he's an alum, you know, he's definitely, he's an alum of Dartmouth. So, um, I'll be speaking to him, uh, right along with the rest of the alumni and the friends. So it'll be exciting. Last question is you just mentioned uh, using Barry kind of a, in a mentor position for your new role here. How do you view yourself? Because I think a, a lot of women in your position right now are not only serving themselves as, or seeing themselves rather as a head coach of a program, but you are really setting a great example and, and going to be a mentor for not only the girls and young women on your team, but the girls in the community who are gonna look up to you and, and from across the track community and see really that anything is possible. What does that mean to you? Oh, it means a whole lot to me. I think it's uh, definitely one of the highlights um, in just accepting this position and being able to on that day, um, just really take a lot of deep breaths in and <laughs> realize what exactly has happened. So um, as you said, not just the director of track and field across country at Dartmouth, but um, being, you know, one of few women who hold this role in the country um, in the, excuse me, NCAA division one position. Um, but then too, being, just being a, um, just being visible, you know, being visible um, as a woman, as a young woman, as a young black woman as well, and being able to take all of this and, and move forward. And um, I think not much even needs to be said on my part. Um, so many people have have recognized it and are have been inspired already and empowered and just from them reaching out via text message, phone calls, emails, letters, um, still receiving them. And, and then also to you, just looking for um, lots of people are very, they're much more open now to ask for assistance, um, to look for guidance, um, to really um, ask for advice. But I think what is really fun is for my former athletes to have been able to see uh, my my path and my progression um, and everyone in the track and field world really to really be able to see where I came from um, and, and every step of the way. And then to be so welcomed by the track and field and cross country team here. Um, they were so excited um, and, and they expressed that to me in all different types of ways and both from the, the men and the women on the team. Um, they respect me. They respect what I've done. They respect my position. Um, and they're excited uh, just about really just kind of making history here and, and um, being able to work with me and being one of those first people. So well, Portia Dobson, the new Marjorie and Herbert Chase class of 30, director of Dartmouth Track and Field and Cross Country. We thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Coaching in COVID. And we look forward to all of the great achievements we know you will achieve here in Hanover. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>